going back to the letter of comfort and the voted loan, I mean, the voted loan's value was 106 million pounds, I think, and the, the, the value of the tender was 96, 97 million pounds. Um, who was party to decisions about the issuing of the letter of comfort and uh, agreeing to the voted loan of that scale? The, so the decision would, the submission would have been in the 8th of August, and then the, the the letter would have been signed thereafter by officials. Is that what you're driving at, Kindina? No, what I'm try, trying to understand is, did you have to sign off the uh, voted loan decision? The drafts were in the submission on the 8th of October. So in essence, in making the decision, I had that copied into the pack at the time. But I mean, for example, would that have gone to the Cabinet Secretary for Finance? Would that have gone to the DG Finance? Would that have gone to the Cabinet? I don't think so, because I was lead minister, and that's the kind of detail that would be dealt with by officials. So I don't think that kind of submission, or that annex to a submission would have been sent to others. The copy list is on the, um, on the papers at the time in terms of the uh, politicians involved. So the, the, but you're saying the transfer of risk from CMEL uh, to FMEL, uh, from FMEL to CMEL and then to the Scottish Government would have been taken by officials with no political sign-off? No, I'm not saying that at all, Convener. What I'm saying, what you asked is, is individual officials, technical... No, I'm asking letter. who signed off that voted loan decision, to your knowledge? Uh, well, the decision is in the 8th of October to proceed with the letter of comfort and the financial background that goes with it. You know, I would, I would want to look at the papers to give you an absolutely... An accurate answer. So, um, the papers that I'm looking at, incidentally, is nothing exclusive. It's just what's in the public domain. Uh, and so, I'm looking at it right now. Draft voted uh, loan letter from Transport Scotland, setting out an agreement to fund the two new 100 metre vessels to be built at FML. So, the draft uh, letters were in the pack on the 8th of October in the submission to me, which, of course, I approved the decision, and then further. Uh, refinement or discussion would have gone on with CMAL and uh, FMEL up to the point of contract award, which was, of course, later in October. Does that help? Yeah, but if I can just very briefly ask you, as a former uh, Cabinet Secretary for Finance, would, I mean, would you not have had any, any involvement in that kind of decision? as the Cabinet Secretary for Finance? It, not specifically and individually in a, in a specific element of it. What, the finance, what any finance secretary would have wanted to have known is overall budget and uh, whatever risks were involved. And I've seen discussion around that, but I'm not saying for a minute that anyone else would have been engaged in the detail other than the officials, having seen the draft in the submission to me on the 8th of October, and the copy list uh, includes the Cabinet Secretary uh, for uh, infrastructure investment in cities, who of course was my cabinet secretary at the time. But of course you would expect DG Finance, so the officials in finance, DG, uh, sorry, um, Scottish Government Legal Directorate and uh, Scottish Government Procurement to be involved as well to make sure everything's in order. Of course you would. Okay, well we may um, investigate that a little bit uh, more deeply, but I'm going to...